Excuse me, Hamza. Hamza, a few days ago you said we have to call out bigots and say F you. Didn't you not? You, your white, white, white speech was the most bigoted thing Scotland has ever, ever heard. So on behalf of Scotland, you, you're a pestilence on the land. You've thrown women and children under the bus. You're despicable. You should be behind bars. Well, that was Scottish Family Party activist Niall Fraser heckling Hamza Yousaf at his fringe show the other day. Right, there's a few things we need to talk about here. I actually met Niall a couple of days before he was going to do this, and he explained to me that he'd got a ticket and he was going to go and heckle the First Minister, not as a, in, in a Scottish family party capacity. He was going to go along and do that as a, an individual. And I said to him, OK, um, don't swear. Uh, don't be personally offensive. And my other tip would be walk out. So say a bit, for your 30 seconds or whatever, and then sit down and just walk out. Don't make them have to, like, you know, drag you out of the place. You know, say a bit and finished. Uh, anyway, in the heat of the moment, that's what happened. And Niall obviously uh, did swear. Now, the context of this is very important in the sense that Hamza Yousaf asked for it. Because in his fringe interview, one, one of his other fringe interviews the other day, Hamza Yousaf said, if you come across someone who's been racist or bigoted or whatever, you should say to them, F you. Uh, he, didn't actually, he, didn't, he actually said the words, though, which I think is pretty poor from the First Minister. Um, so I've got no sympathy for him saying that. He shouldn't have said that. But that's what Hamza Yousaf said. It was reported in the media. He got a bit of flack for it. So Hamza Yousaf said, if you come across racism, say to the person, F you. That's what Hamza Yousaf said. Okay. Now, uh, in his... Uh, fringe show here where Niall was in the audience it got to a bit uh, where Hamza said about you know people who try and obstruct him or whatever and he said it's normally middle-aged white men and the audience laughed because obviously everyone knows it's open season on middle-aged white men you can say what you like about them if, if someone was, was to say in a fringe show um, you know the problem is the brown men would that get a laugh from the audience no that would get a oh, you can't say that that's really awful if someone said, oh, yeah, yeah, the crime around here is, is young black men. They're the problem. Would that get a laugh? If that got a laugh, you'd think this audience is racist. Um, and so they would just be seen as outrageous to say something like that. Your Humza Yousaf thinks he can have a go at middle-aged white men as a group, as a generalised group, and that's OK. It gets a laugh. Well, I think that's not OK. Now, let's look at some of the background, what Naya mentioned there as well. They talked about Humza Yousaf's white, white, white speech that he gave in the Scottish Parliament uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, I actually found that speech and took it to a much wider audience, let's put it that way. Uh, but Hamza Yousaf was complaining that lots of people in senior positions within the legal system, etc., were all white. And when he's saying it, you can hear the disdain and venom in his voice as he goes through these people and says they're white and so-and-so is white and the person in this job is white. And it was pretty unpleasant stuff. So Hamza Yousaf wants different treatment. He wants uh, non-white people to be given various advantages and uh, sort of positive discrimination. So he wants racial discrimination. And his attitude and his disdain towards white people, I think, is, is quite apparent. And the way that he, he would criticise white, like white men as a group, well, I, I think that is, that is racist. I think that's prejudiced. And that's, uh, that's just not on. Uh, Hamza Yousaf was talking about Malcolm X. Is his hero, Malcolm X, who thought like white people were subhuman and, and hoped they got killed in plane crashes and things like that. I mean, Malcolm X did moderate his views uh, later to some degree, but still, for Hamza used to have to say that he was a hero, well, I think that's quite concerning. So, was, uh, was Nile Fraser right to accuse Hamza Yousaf of being bigoted in his comment? Well, I think there was some justification for that. I think Hamza Yousaf does try to play the race card in a way that's divisive and uh, inflammatory. And also, I would say it does betray an attitude where he wants different races treated differently and he's willing to make judgments on races like white men, they're the problem. You know, you know, and I think that's just wrong. That's just wrong. So, uh, from Niall's point of view, we thought, right, Hamza Yousaf is asking for it. Hamza Yousaf said, if you come across people you know, expressing racist views, then say to them, F you. And so Niall did to Hamza what he'd asked for, if you like. There was a rhetorical symmetry uh, about that. Right, so what do I think about it? What's the Scottish Family Party's point of view? Well, first of all, heckling. 
I think heckling is okay uh, in moderation. You shouldn't stop the show. You can say your bit and then the show goes on. If you're actually stopping the event proceeding, I think that's out of order. But to, it adds a bit of drama to it, a bit of colour. It gives the person on the platform a chance to respond to it. And I think, you know, I think that's, that's fine. That's part of, of political life. Now, the swearing, how about that side of it? I wish uh, Niall had said F you rather than saying the actual uh, words. Right, but for me, I, I mean, I'm against swearing completely. I endeavour not to swear myself. In fact, I would even say I don't swear myself. I, I just don't like it at all. I've got lots of reasons for that. Uh, partly because of a Christian, partly I'm like the uh, the F word. It seems to be based on the assumption that sexual intercourse is a means of hurting another person, uh, which I think is really you know completely wrong. Uh, but they're my personal opinions. Uh, I'm very much against swearing. I find it quite repulsive and distasteful, but that's just me. That's just me. That's not the Scottish Family Party. That's me. Uh, there'll be other people in the Scottish Family Party who would disagree with that, and that is fine. That's not a matter of our policy, and we've got people of diverse backgrounds and, and beliefs, so that's, uh, that's that. Having said that, though, are we happy for Scottish Family Party representatives to swear at opponents? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But the difference in this case, we think is a significant difference, is that... Hamza Yousaf asked for it. Uh, Niall Fraser was reflecting back to Hamza Yousaf the exact language that Hamza Yousaf had encouraged people to use. So I think that makes things uh, very different. Now after this, uh, Niall apologised to me. He said he was sorry, you know, he wasn't sort of planning to swear, but that's what came out, so he apologised to me. Uh, do I think Niall needs to apologise to Hamza Yousaf? Absolutely not, because Hamza Yousaf asked for it. Hamza Yousaf used the same language himself and encouraged other people to use the same language. Now, if this hadn't been in this contact, uh, context, if a Scottish Family Party activist just went up to an, a political opponent, or anyone really, and said to them, you know, F you, then they'd probably be suspended from the party and, and maybe ejected. We've never had a case like that, but that would be treated in that sort of way. I would say in the other parties, uh, it doesn't happen like that. I mean, there's a Conservative at the moment who said that the migrants should F off back to France. And when Ian Blackford, did he say something like, you know, English tourists should F off or something during the, the pandemic? And so you know, this sort of language is used by representatives of other parties and it basically goes unchallenged. Now, Hamza Yousaf, of course, it is, as usual, is claiming he's been the victim of racial discrimination. He has experienced racial discrimination, but from what I can see, it's all been positive. His race and, and religion as well have helped him to get where he is today. So Niall Fraser should have said F you rather than actually saying uh, the words. He, he could have stood there and said, Hamza, you said that people should say F you. I won't stoop to your level by using the actual language, etc. Uh, but Niall didn't do that in the heat of the moment. And that was unfortunate, but that was that. But the point he was making and also the way he was demonstrating you know, Hamza Yousaf, the fact that he was requesting, inviting people to use that sort of language was just justified. Now, Niall Fraser is very talented, he's a fiery character and a great asset to the SFP. So I'm sure we've, uh, you know, there'll be, there'll be lessons learned and onwards and upwards. But I'm reminded of a story just to finish this off. I mean, when I was younger, there's a very famous Christian sort of preacher, writer called Tony Campolo. And one of the stories he used to tell, uh, was he went to a group of Christians and he said to them something like, um, you know, 30,000 children die of starvation every year and you people couldn't give a SHIT. He said that in, in this Christian meeting. So you can imagine what happened. People go, oh, that, that was terrible. And then he said, and you know what's worse? He said, you people are more bothered that I used a bad word than the 30,000 children died of starvation last year. That's a pretty powerful point, isn't it, that? It's a pretty powerful point. And I would say with this, well, let, let's look at an illustration. I mean, the other day in her Fringe show, Kate Forbes reiterated her support for uh, abortion being available through, through the NHS. She said you know, she, she wants that to continue. She would ensure that that continues. Now, how many Christians hear that and think that is beyond the pale? She wants the killing of unborn children to continue. Are Christians more bothered about that? Or are they more bothered about a Scottish Family Party representative swearing, which is the bigger issue? Now, I know the answer to that. 
I know the answer to that. So my uh, personal view on swearing is very much the same. And uh, the Scottish Family Party point of view, I've explained that. But that's, uh, that, that's that issue. I know a number of people have been in touch commenting about it one way or the other. So I just think I'd uh, draw a line under it by letting you know the official Family Party position. So thanks for watching and see you soon.